About age 14 I did close to home. I was Jan, I was the horrible huckery moly friend of Gail's who got her into trouble, and, you know, I was a bad girl. And I look at it now and, um, you know, everything seems so slow and, you know, our television's got a lot faster now. But yeah, you know, that was interesting. The, the TV One car used to come and pick me up from school. And uh, I remember saying, don't, don't come up to the school, just park at the gates. I was really embarrassed. Because, at, of course, at 3.15 the bell would go and 1,000 girls would pour down the drive. And if you're in the TV One car, trying to get down the drive with 1,000 girls, on, on like this in the back. No. Okay. They brought a production called Metamorphosis to Wellington, to Downstage Theatre, and that's when I was at 17, I saw that and went, oh, I'm going there. And I uh, went to a summer school, then went to the drama school and went into the main company and basically did play after play after play for years. So I feel really, really grateful to have had that experience. And I think that also the breadth of work that we did from, you know, musicals to Shakespeare to classics to modern plays, you know, was a great training ground. I did a series called Seekers with Timuera Morrison. That was the first, you yes, it was really just out of drama school, I think. I think it was 83. And then 85, I did one of the About Face films with Gregor Nicholas called Danny and Raywin. And... Uh, really loved doing that because we rehearsed it like a play you know we just had this little crummy little apartment and it was all ours and uh we shot pretty well chronologically and uh i, I absolutely loved that experience that's my best sort of film experience up to that time that was my first feature yes and i just felt so lucky to be working with leon who's you know such an artist and a wonderful person so, and I was working with Michael, and ah, oh, there was just a great team of people on that film. It felt really, I just felt so lucky to be in that. So, and also, it, that was interesting because we shot the um, the the old part um, of the film, and then I went away for quite a while because the other characters in the modern story shot a lot of their stuff, and I went to France in between and went to Paris and went to where Le Trec lived and all of that. So I felt really sort of the whole experience went on for months. And then I came back and had my hair dyed and was, you know, the actress playing Mireille. So uh, it was a wonderful experience. And then out of that, uh, I got Desperate Remedies because I had auditioned for Desperate Remedies and I don't think done a great audition, but uh, Peter and Stuart, I think, saw Footstep. I think that's how it went. I can't remember how I felt when I got it, but because um, all my focus, I suppose, is on the doing of it. And we were in this, you know, this warehouse, and uh, magic was created in that warehouse. And I, I remember sort of you'd step out onto the wharves of Auckland in these fantastic gowns and with parasols, you know. And I'd wave to a friend who had an office way up in, you know, in Auckland, downtown Auckland. Say, so look, I think I phoned, look out the window. And there was a sort of couple of visions of amazing 18th century women. And, uh, and then go, in, go in, back in for work. And you're in, you know, this completely lush little world, surrounded by grotty warehouse. But there we were in this in incredibly opulent and, and wonderful environment. But... Um, but just how we were dressed and the, the way it was designed and the way they were directing and the look they wanted did give everything the sort of heightened feel. So it was, you know, in that way very theatrical for me. Yes, you'd sort of get shots of, you know, Kevin and I sort of faces, you know, right like this and all you're doing is looking at their mouth and, you know, it was wonderful to be in. We went straight into production of Cabaret at the Watershed so we were learning our lines on set of Desperate Remedies for that. Uh, and we, we also travelled together with the film. So we, we spent a lot of time and it was, it was really marvellous. And, you know, we miss him deeply. Well, really early 90s, I went to Australia and I did Full Frontal, which was a sketch comedy series. And I did about, about 44 episodes of that. So over t uh, sort of about two years, I kind of lived in Melbourne. And... Uh, that was completely different for me because I hadn't done any sketch comedy in New Zealand. And at the time that they were coming to audition um, me, I, I just had, I think I was shooting Desperate Remedies or something, and I couldn't get 
I couldn't work out, I didn't have any time to work out the characters, so I said, look, I'll, let me just come and have a talk to you. And they'd seen me in the front lawn when I toured to Melbourne with that. So I sort of got the job off the back of the front lawn and um, had a wonderful time working with Ted Emery, who's an amazing director, I would have walked over broken glass for him. I've been lucky, the last few jobs that I did were incredibly creatively satisfying. I did Fracture with Larry Parr which was up there with my top experiences on the film. I, I had a great character for a start, and Morris G is a brilliant story writer, and I thought Larry had done a great screenplay. And I loved the way he worked with me, and I was off mostly for 90% of the film, I'm flat on my back on a hospital bed, with tubes up my nose or whatever, a neck brace on. And so my, my communication with my fellow actors and my director was, you know, like that and uh, he was very um, gentle and to the point director and I, I loved it and I just have you know very strong memories of when the camera's right here and and there's another actor right there and I can hear the film ticking over in the canister and I loved that I just had a you know wonderful time doing that interrogation Oh. I did, which I, again, now that was lovely, because that was, you got big runs at your scenes because of the way it was filmed, it was basically often a camera right up in the corner and no one in the interrogation room, or or a camera going right around the table, so a whole scene, so you could really get it going with your fellow actors, so I like that, I like it when you get a good run at something. In 1982 I met him when I was at drama school and he was in the main company and then 1983 we did a production called The Trial which was a Stephen Burkhoff adaptation of Kafka's The Trial and uh, that was m marvellous and we sort of pinged there and really the rest is history and I'd say that that we have a really good shorthand with each other with work so we don't really muck around we can pretty well cut to the chase with with feedback or or suggestions and that's really great and also we like each other's work and I think that is probably why our life together works well. Well we went up to LA for the Xena convention because Michael Hurst who played Aeolus in Hercules but he also directed a number of those episodes and Xena episodes and uh, we put together a cabaret which we've done a few times before a sort of very eclectic collection of songs and bits of Shakespeare and I did some Wayata and yeah all sorts of things and um, we rehearsed it and rehearsed the hell out of it actually and really had a good time putting that together. I played uh, in Xena I played Bodicea and also another episode I played a character called Zara who was a sort of nasty theatre producer. Lots of fun, lots of fun, yeah. In fact, that whole that whole period was uh, an incredible time of our lives. Um, you know, obviously, Mike was very busy, and we had children coming through that whole time. And well, uh, a whole lot of people got trained up on that, which is brilliant. So it meant that you know there could be crews for Lord of the Rings, Fracture, oh, going Hammer and Tongs, and Danny and Raywin, uh, Ball scene and. Desperate Remedies, and, and this beautifully, beautifully art-directed design little studio and the Footstep Man with a lot of intensity going on. Just love that. So I feel really lucky to have had such amazing screen experiences. I have two shows, one called Falling in Love Again, and that is a uh, a cabaret of Marlene Dietrich music and that came off the back of a play that I did at Bartir. I also have a new show called The Look of Love, Evocative, Provocative and I've just been at Downstage in Wellington with that so doing both of them at the Auckland Festival. I love it. <laughs>